Welcome back to another episode of Four Expedition Adventurer. In this episode, we venture out to Northern Arizona's beautiful San Francisco mountains located just north of Flagstaff. Come with me on this beautiful fall time solo journey to explore the wonders of space and time. The next episode of Four Expedition Adventure starts now. Hey there, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Four Expedition Adventure. I'm Scott Luthold. Today I'm coming to you from one of my favorite camp spots on the northern slope of Mount Humphreys in the San Francisco Peaks, just north of Flagstaff, Arizona. I decided to come up here with the Subaru Outback and I took a road to get up to this particular spot, which is a little bit more difficult than most people would probably like to endure with their own vehicles, but the Subaru did just fine, put it into a hill ascent mode and it just climbed up this stuff, no problem. It's been probably about, what, three months since I've taken an adventure with the Subaru Outback, so it's been a long time coming. I'm sure a lot of you are excited to see this video. I am as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. On another note, it's been probably since the beginning of June since I've taken a solo adventure. All summer long, if you've been watching my episodes, I've been taking trips with the Ram Rebel with the sliding camper on the back, spent time in Park City, Utah, and then after that went up into Montana and did that whole loop. If you watch those episodes, I'm sure you enjoyed those. Those are really beautiful episodes, if I do say so myself. But it's been a long time since I took a solo trip and I really felt like I needed to get out and spend some time in nature by myself. I've also got a lot of, a lot of episodes I'm going to be filming because on Monday I go in for um, an ankle surgery and then I'll have to be off my foot for probably about a week in a boot and then I'll have to wear that boot for probably another three weeks after that. So all of October I'm probably going to be laying pretty low. So I decided to come up here and capture a whole bunch of episodes so that I could do some editing and have some great stuff to share with you through the month of October while I'm laid up. As you can see here behind me, I've got the iCamper SkyCamp Mini all set up. I'm pretty excited to be camping in that. It's been since probably May that I camped in it last. And as most of you know, back then I installed carpeting on the floor to reduce condensation. And I was pretty curious to get it open because I haven't had it open all summer. And in Arizona, the summers can get really hot. And I was concerned that maybe that adhesive that was holding that carpeting in place might let loose and a lot of that carpeting would would come off the floor because part of the camper flips upside down. And after I talked to my brother Dan, who also installed the same carpeting in his high camper sky camp, he told me that the heat of summer caused a lot of that adhesive to come undone. But I was happy to see that when I opened mine up, all the carpeting is still stuck. That's a really good sign. And um, if some of you are following uh, my installation of that carpeting I'm, and maybe even done, uh, done so yourself, I'm happy to report that 110 or 120 degrees in my eye camp or sky camp didn't cause that that adhesive to come undone so pretty exciting i'm excited to be up there in that camper i've only camped in that sky camp mini a couple of times since i got it in november i've got a pretty exciting trip coming up to new mexico my ankle should be all healed up i've rented a little cabin just outside of the town of silver city along the gila wilderness area and the gila mountain range i'm really excited to be going out there and spending some time as well so stay tuned for that and then in December, I've got an entire week trip coming up to Sedona. And the reason I'm going to do that is because the last time I was in Sedona, I was talking to some people who had um, never been to Sedona before. And three quarters of the way through the trip, I met them and told them about all these things that they should go do. And they had not even known. And so they missed out on a lot of things and they rearranged their adventure for the last day that they were going to be there to do some of the things that I suggested. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Sedona for an entire week. I'm going to do a ton of filming and I'm going to create a number of episodes that allow you for when you go to Sedona to be able to really have the kind of experience in Sedona that I'm accustomed to. I've got a lot of experience in Sedona and there's a lot of really wonderful things to see. If you haven't become a subscriber to my channel, I'd really love it if you would. And of course, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when videos go live. And if you'd like to support 4Expedition, go to 4Expedition.com, go to our store. We have a lot of really cool things in there you can buy, like hats, t-shirts, decals, stickers, patches, and all sorts of really great things. And if you'd like to become a member of Team 4X, go to 4Expedition.com slash join to learn all about that. I really look forward to sharing this episode with you, so sit back and enjoy the ride.
As you'll notice, I've got two sleeping bags up here, some X-ped mats, two pillows, a blanket, and I'm able to keep all that up here because I removed the mat that came with this iCamper SkyCamp and I replaced it with carpeting, and the carpeting is designed to keep condensation away. But it also reduces the amount of space that it takes up inside, probably about two to three inches, and I'm able to replace that with two sleeping bags, deflated X-peds, and two pillows. Not too bad. Alright, so on these X-PED mats, there's an inflator valve and a deflator valve. And all you have to do is open up one of these valves and it'll start inflating. And as you can tell, I don't know if you can see this, but that end roll there is slowly unrolling because it's filling up with air. So if I just leave this sit here for the next maybe 15, 20 minutes, when I come back, this X-PED mat will be completely full. And then I might have to just push a little bit more air into it just to make it nice and firm. Because I'm going solo, I've got two X-PED mattresses, one for myself and one for my partner. But since I'm here by myself, I'm gonna go ahead and inflate both of these and make my sleeping that much more comfortable. Now that these X-Peds are filled up, I've stacked them on top of one another. I'm going to take a blanket, put a blanket over it because there's air inside these and I don't want that cold air transferring to my body. And I've got these normal bedroom pillows and I've got them in the original plastic that they came in and that keeps them clean and it keeps them dry. So just unzip one of these. Pull a nice pillow out, 
and I've got a nice pillow to throw up there. Okay, so I'm almost done. So the sleeping bags that I have up here right now, I'm not going to use on this trip because I've got a brand new sleeping bag from Sierra Designs that I plan on doing a gear guide episode with. And I'm testing it out here in the field. They've asked me to test it. I'm going to test it out here. It's a new um, patent pending zipperless sleeping bag. It should be really cool. So I'm going to use that tonight and see how that goes. And I'll, uh, I'll do a gear guide episode today probably and put that out sometime this week. All right, so one of the first things I thought I would do on this adventure was to bring along some of the things that I've received in the mail from all of you. I've got some really great subscribers and fan base, and I really appreciate the time and energy and the financial investment people make in order to be able to send something to me. And usually the things people send are pretty, um, pretty thoughtful, and I thought maybe I'd share a couple of them. I brought three of them along to share with all of you, three of them that I've received recently. The first one I thought I would share with you is from a gentleman named Paul Bateman. And Paul Bateman lives in Great Britain. He watches the channel. I think he even watches it with his wife, which is really cool. And um, I believe that the the videos that I've been putting out have inspired him to get out there in Great Britain and start doing some exploring. So he's been out there doing some exploring around the area and looking for some really cool historical sites in Great Britain. And um, I've been following along on his Facebook and seeing some of the places that he's discovered. So I think that's really cool. But uh, Paul went out of his way to send me a couple of books, and he sent me a note, and he also sent me this really cool decal. So I thought I'd share all that with you. Got to put my glasses on so I can read some of this. He says here, Please find and close the following items for your pleasure. So he sent me an East Riding of York, which is the White Rose um, County sticker. So this is his home county of East Riding. He sent me a sticker, which is really cool. I'll decide whether I'm going to put that on the Subaru or maybe on the Ram, something like that. So then he also sent me a couple of books, and he writes here, The first book is called The North York Moors National Park. Please note, this book is from when I started as a park ranger back in the late 80s. Oh, that's really cool. So he was a park ranger in Great Britain. So obviously it's a little old-fashioned now, but still relevant. How cool is that? He sent me a national park book for north north york moors and from what i understand this maybe was the national park that he was a park ranger at that's really cool so i'm going to do a little bit of reading of that then he also sent me this really cool book which i've um shared with all of you a little bit on instagram this is a book about the first overland adventure this is london to singapore by land rover and this is a really cool uh what i would call History in the Making book, if you will. And he writes the first Overland. He said, hopefully you haven't read it yet, which I actually have not. And I've started to read it since he sent it, me, sent it to me. It says, not sure if, you're fo if you follow the story of them finding one of the original Land Rovers that did the trip, which they mechanically restored and took, took it back out to Singapore and drove it back to the UK. How cool is that? So this is the original Overland adventure with those, with those rovers. And they actually discovered one of them somewhere restored it and they took the trip again it was on uk tv and videos on youtube facebook page etc and they called it the last overland i believe hope you enjoy paul thank you paul so much i really appreciate it i think that's very thoughtful of you to send these books to me and i do really love to read real books um i don't really watch or i don't really read digital media too much digital books i have a couple of them and i'll listen to some audiobooks once in a while but i do really like a real book. I like the smell of a real book. It's just, I'm, I guess I'm old fashioned that way. All right. So anyway, thank you, Paul. All right. Up next, there's a gentleman up in Canada named Steve Yorksey and Steve works for Subaru of Hamilton up there in Canada. And he sent me a little note and he sent me a care package as well. How cool is that? Hello, Scott. Here's a couple of items from North of the border. As a small token of my enjoyment of your channel and info, I hope to tour your area one day soon in my Subaru Outback and join in with you on one of your outdoor tours you were planning on running. There's a Canadian Outback camping t-shirt for yourself, also a hat for Amy, and a cool pink bandana for Shay the Pup. <laughs> That's so cool, Steve. Um, thanks again for all you do and hope to be in your neck of the woods soon. Boy, I hope so too. I hope those borders open up and um, I'm able to make some trips up to Canada 
and people from Canada are able, are able to make their way back down to Arizona. People, I have some friends and neighbors that are Canadian that can't come back to their winter residence here. So uh, I do hope that opens up again soon. And, and Steve, I really hope that you can join in. So he gave me this really cool Subaru hat. And he gave Shay Shay the dog a really cool bandana, Subaru. And uh, how cool. He gave me a scale model replica of a green Subaru Outback. That's really cool. Got a lanyard here, keychain that says uh, Subaru of Hamilton on it. And a really nice t-shirt. Looks like you got this, oh, that's cool. Got me a t-shirt here that has a lantern and a Subaru on it. We'll give that to Amy. And it looks like we got a couple of um, a couple little storage sacks. That's really nice. Anyway, that's again, that's from Steve Yorksey. Sales and Leasing Consultant at Subaru of Hamilton. Thank you so much, Steve, and I really appreciate you watching the channel. All right, up next. <laughs> All right, I got oh, I got a really cool couple of things in here. Got this really cool hardcover book called Cabin Porn. And the Cabin Porn book is just a really great book. I'm going to move this box out of the way here for a second. Really great book that shows all sorts of awesome camping, or excuse me, cabins in the woods. Different types of cabins, tell stories about those cabins uh, all over the world. And um, this is really cool. I think, I actually think this book originated from, yeah, yep, again, Beaver Brook. So Beaver Brook is in northern New York, and it's a, a preserve up there that was started by a couple of tech gents. And they bought this property up there. And some of you may have seen this cabin before. I think it was featured in Architectural Digest or something like that. But really cool book. But they did an Instagram feed that had all these cool cabins in it. And I think they've taken a lot of those and put it in this book. So I'm really looking forward to uh, reading through this book. And in fact, right here on this spread is uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's Taliesin West, which is located in Scottsdale, Arizona. And they've got some really cool small cabin properties on on um on Talies and West's property. So that's cool. I'm looking forward to reading through that. And then uh looks like a, I also received a gone camping sign. That's really cool. I might be able to hang that inside the truck camper. And it says here Scott just wanted to send you this book for inspiration along your journey to building a cabin in the woods. <laughs> May you find what you're looking for best. Ron W. Albuquerque. Ron, uh, thank you so much from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I really appreciate you sending me that. That's a real sweet, kind gesture to send those things to me. And I look forward to reading the book and, and using this really cool sign. Anyhow, thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate the gifts. I appreciate the support and all the wonderful comments on my channel. It really makes a difference when you share your comments with me of positive inspiration. It really keeps me going at three three o'clock in the morning when I'm still editing a video, trying to get it out for the next morning, that kind of thing. It really makes a difference. And um, it really inspires me to want to do better. And uh, I've, I've got that sort of nature anyway to always be producing better quality. I'm a designer at heart and I'm always improving my capabilities as much as I can. So your inspiration and motivation and your support really goes a long way and helps me a lot. Thank you so much, everybody. It's so quiet. There's no breeze. None of the aspen leaves are flickering in the wind. No sounds going through the pine needles. No birds chirping. Nothing. No airplanes. It's remarkably quiet. Look at you. Are you crazy cute?
Got ourselves some sharp cheddar cheese. Got some Asian noodles with soy sauce and chicken. And then of course my favorite, some of you know, late July jalapeno lime chips. And I just dropped my fork on the ground. That's all right. 30 second rule. Also got myself a little ah, or is that aha, I'm not sure. Sparkling water. Cheers. I really love having this propane fire pit. I've used it quite a bit since I got it, but when there's fire restrictions, there's no um, campfires allowed in the national forest because it's dry. But you're allowed to have fire pits that are propane. And that's, I imagine, primarily because it's very easy to turn off. You can control the flame. There's no sparks, nothing like that. So I can turn it down and turn it way down here. So it's just a little flame or I can turn it way up. But it's keeping both me and the pup nice and warm. She'll be sleeping in the back seat of the car tonight. <clears throat> I've got a doggy bed and a bunch of blankets for her. She'll probably be warmer than I am. Uh, the rooftop tent can get a little bit chilly at times. You know, the other day on Facebook, I posted a graphic across a whole bunch of different uh, Facebook groups. It had a Four Expedition logo at the top and it said, leave your campsite better than you found it. And I'm sure some of you may recall over the summer, I took a nice trip and there was a moment in Ferndale, California where I read a, a gravestone that said that. And that's really stuck with me. Um, I think people took it pretty literally when I posted it to the groups because I had probably over a thousand people like and comment on it, maybe a couple hundred shares. And most of the people were taking it pretty literally when it was they were talking about when you enter a campsite and you leave a campsite, leave no trace. That's a big philosophy of mine as well. And uh, because so, I've actually been working on developing a new website that's going to be a service of Four Expedition called Camp Steward. Campsteward.com. And it'll be a, a pledging system where I will encourage people to go on there and go through the system and take the pledge to abide by a certain protocol when you go camping, including, you know, keeping your, your campsite clean, making sure your fire is absolutely dead out, uh, cleaning up after yourself and others. If you go around your camp and you find things like toilet, old toilet paper, things like that, cleaning it up. And then when you leave your campsite, ensuring that everything was left better than you found it. And I also intend to institute a protocol that involves checking on other people's campsites. If let's say you have somebody camping next to you uh, for the weekend and they leave before you do on your way out, just stop in and make sure their campsite is clean and the fire is dead out. Now I'm not suggesting that everyone stop at every single campsite along their way out because that would take an entire day more than likely, but just, you know, just being sure that your campsite, your fire is dead out, your neighbor's campfire is dead out on your way out the door, just, just improves the possibilities of protecting and maintaining the national forests that we have, the public lands, and uh, maintaining access, making sure that we always continue to have access because we respect the environment, we respect the forest, and we ensure that our impact is minimal when we spend time in nature. <clears throat> so look for that uh, website to go live pretty soon. It's called campsteward.com and there'll be a pledge system in there. And at the end of the pledge, there will be a, an opportunity to uh, contribute something in support of the initiative of taking this around the world. You'll be able to buy some t-shirts and hats and swag and things and all of the proceeds will 
go toward maintaining that organization and or that service and uh, spreading it around the world. I think I'll probably approach a number of overland organizations that have paying members and suggest that they require their members to go through the pledge to to ensure that that their membership base is acting out of integrity and honor and responsibility for for nature when they spend time in it now if you don't take it quite so literally you can apply that same methodology to your entire life and that can that can include leaving the earth in a better state than you found it when you arrived here <clears throat> it could mean improving other people's lives it could mean giving a little bit of yourself and your time to causes that make a difference it could mean starting your own organization that makes a difference it could mean simple things it could mean it could mean um you know handing your leftovers after you leave a restaurant to a homeless person i've done that many times you know it could also mean looking at what kind of impact you have on the planet as far as uh, your carbon footprint. How can you decrease your carbon, your carbon footprint? Are you recycling? Are you properly recycling? Are you reducing the amount of trash that you use? Are you wasting food? Are you eating food and then leaving it in your refrigerator and, and letting it go bad and, and it going to waste when people in other parts of the world are starving? It could mean um, being a mentor as you get older. And in fact, as I get older, I, I could see myself spending a little bit of time mentoring other people. You know, the older we get, the more wisdom we have. And that wisdom comes from lots of challenges, comes from the hard lessons that we've learned or observing other people's hard lessons. And all those things come together in sort of a, a beautiful book of wisdom. And it's a shame if we don't share that wisdom with younger people, people who you might be able to help understand why something's happening, happening the way it is. Sometimes the things we do, we don't understand why they happened, you know, why the outcomes happened the way they did, yet we made decisions along the way that, that made that outcome transpire. So I would really encourage more people to spend time figuring out what they can do to leave the planet better than they found it. Leave your, leave your relationships better than you found them. You know, there's just a lot you can do. Just a lot you can do. I find myself oftentimes working, burning the candle at both ends. And in fact, this week, I'm out here shooting probably four or five episodes and also trying to decompress just a little bit and spend some time out here before I go in for surgery and all of that and just have a little solo adventure for, for once. I haven't had a solo adventure in a number of months. But I also have to remember that Leaving my campsite better than I found it also means respecting and appreciating and honoring me, my body, my physical health, and things like that, which I tend to put second. You know, I'd rather spend $6,000 doing a lift kit on the RAM than spending $6,000 getting ankle surgery. <clears throat> but the reality is, if I can forego some of those things and spend more time investing in my own personal good health, I'll live longer, I'll gain more wisdom, I'll be able to spend more time later on in life leaving the planet better than I found it. And ultimately, along the way, I'll be able to do more adventuring, I'll be able to do some backpacking and things like that. I haven't been able to backpack in quite a while because my ankle's been a problem. So that's probably why you haven't seen those kinds of adventures on my channel in a while. Early on in my channel, I was doing 
mountain climbing and uh, you know extensive backpacking trips and things like that. So anyhow, leave your campsite better than you found it. All right, so I set up this new Sierra Design sleeping bag and it's pretty cool. It's a mummy, but it's a wider mummy. So it does taper toward the bottom and it does have this really cool area to tuck your head underneath. So your head's gonna stay nice and warm. But what I like about it the most so far is that it's zipperless. So there's no zippers on this thing whatsoever. The top sort of, if you can see here, the top kind of tucks in and it's, it's attached at the bottom and, and right here to the sides, but it tucks in. And otherwise it acts kind of like a, a comforter on a bed. And then one thing that's really cool is right here on the corners, it's got these built-in mittens to keep your hands inside of, to keep your hands warm. So I'll show this to you more in the morning, but I'm going to test it out tonight and just see how comfortable it is. And when I do my review of it in the morning, I'll be able to tell you exactly how well I slept in it. So far, so good. Boy, the carpeting on the floor in here is nice, and the double X-ped mats are nice. This new sleeping bag by Sierra Designs is pretty nice. I think I'm going to have a pretty good, comfortable night's sleep tonight. Maybe I'll get a good full night's sleep. I haven't had a full night's sleep in a while. This um, Sky Camp Mini is a nice little, nice little tent for, for you know, two people, but. It's really great for one person. There's plenty of room in here to keep other gear. Plenty of room to sit up. I really like this little tent. And uh, I had the iCamper SkyCamp original, which is a four-person tent. I still have that. I'm actually putting that up for sale. If anybody's interested in buying a SkyCamp full-size four-person tent, I've got one putting up for sale. I'm located in Arizona. If you're near Arizona, come on over and pick it up. But uh, I'm pretty pretty thrilled with this Sky Camp Mini. It's a nice little tent, and it's solid and roomy. Well, anyhow, I think I had a really good day today. Really glad I came up here. It's nice to get up here and get into nature and spend some time. Last time I came up here, I was chasing thunderstorms. You might have watched that episode. We really haven't had much rain this year. I think maybe there was only one or two rainstorms so far. So we, our monsoon season seems to have moved a little bit further into the year. So we're still hoping for, for some good monsoon rain in end of September and into October, but not so good. So far, it's pretty dry. But uh, anyhow, nonetheless, I'm really happy to be up here. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful time of the year to be up here. The leaves are starting to change colors on the on the aspen trees. It's really nice. I'll probably try to show you some of that tomorrow. Anyhow, until tomorrow morning, good night.
Well, good morning. Didn't have the best night's sleep. For some reason, whenever I go camping, the first night, it takes me a while to uh, get adjusted, so I don't really sleep very well the first night. The sun's coming up over all the aspens. A little bit further up the mountain, the aspens have changed colors, but where I'm at, which is actually pretty high in elevation, I'm probably at somewhere in the neighborhood of about, I'd say, 9,500 feet in elevation. And the trees have not started changing colors yet here in Arizona. But the further up you go up the slope here, I notice that the aspens have really started to change colors. And I might try to hike up there a little ways. Um, you know, I've got the ankle problems, so I won't be able to do too much. But I'm going to try getting up there into the colors and seeing some of the beautiful yellow aspen leaves. I'm a, I'm a little bit early in the season. It's um, it's mid-September right now, and usually the leaves change colors here in Arizona at the end of September, beginning of October. I didn't hear one sound last night. The dog was silent. There were no coyotes howling. There was no breeze. It was very, very peaceful. And it's very peaceful this morning. Sun's poking through the trees. I always love to go out and do a little sun gazing. Look into the sun for a little bit. Close my eyes. Let the, the warmth of the sun warm my face. Should be another beautiful day. Boy, I don't know about you, but I sure love my public lands. National Forests, Bureau of Land Management, National Monuments, National Parks. I really think that our public lands really need to be protected in this country. Here in the West, there's so much land that's becoming privatized and becoming inaccessible to the public. I think it's so important to protect our public lands and keep this natural beauty for generations to come. I spend so much time on public land a great deal of the memories that I've got from my life are memories spent on public lands. There's a pretty big initiative right now by extraction companies to privatize public lands and reverse national monuments in order to be able to extract resources. I just think that's the wrong thing to do. You know, extraction is a short-term gain. Protecting natural resources and protecting the natural beauty of public land is just, it, you know, it's, it's something that's of value for generations to come, whereas extracting oil from public land, for instance, is only a short-term value. There's no long-term value in that. You know, and once the public lands have been privatized and marked up and destroyed, it's, it's going to be hundreds of years before they return to what they are now. I was watching a documentary on YouTube that was provided by Patagonia and, and then uh, executive directed by uh, Robert Redford talking, I think it was called um, Public Trust. If you haven't seen it, it just came out this month. I definitely encourage you to go on YouTube and watch it, Public Trust. Really interesting documentary talking about the essentially the war right now over public land in the United States and the privatization of public land and, and extraction for its resources. And I think it's really important to, uh, to, you know, to become knowledgeable about what's going on and do your part in protecting the land that we have as citizens of this country to access. Because if we don't, before you know it, all of this wonderful space that we have to enjoy and to recreate on will be privatized and there'll be no trespassing signs everywhere. And it's already happening a lot in the West. You know, a lot of places you go in Montana and, and even here in Arizona, you see fences up everywhere now and uh, no trespassing signs. Yes, I want to have my own piece of property, but not at the expense of of um, taking away access to public land from others. 
You know, in fact, I want my land to be a place where people come and enjoy. So anyway, if you haven't watched that show, that that documentary, um, Public Trust, definitely go and watch that. chicken salad it's a bagged salad and I just had some rotisserie chicken that I tore off the chicken and put in a Tupperware before I came out here so I had an entire rotisserie chicken in Tupperware so nice little salad should be enough to suffice for this evening I'd like to have a conversation with you. Yeah, you. What are your hopes and dreams? What are you doing to achieve them? Are you doing anything to create a more meaningful, peaceful existence? Are you living in harmony with people, with nature? with the environment? Are you living a conscious life? What's distracting you? What's distracting you right now in this life? What can you do to put that aside? Where are you going? What path are you walking? Who are you helping? Are you taking steps to find your magnificence? Are you shining brightly like those stars above your head? Are you living in this moment? Or are you caught in the past or hoping for the future? You've heard this before. There is no past. There is no future. There is only this moment. Right here. Right now. It's time to live in it. Live in this moment. And in this moment, live consciously. Bring peace and happiness. Bring support. Make it meaningful. Let's bring it together, an infinity of unity. 
must live as one whole and complete, with caring and kindness for each other and for this planet that we live in. We're blessed to be here. This is an incredible miracle that we exist. It's easy to get caught up in the distractions. It's time to live with purpose, with integrity and honor. I'm counting on you. The planet's counting on you. Your friends and family are counting on you. It's time to stand up, join together, bring peace to this world. There's no other way to be. There's no other way to live. It's time to shine like those stars and flicker your light, and tell your story across the cosmos. It's time to come together and tell our story as a united force. As one conscious being, all of us, the entire planet, the oceans, Join me. Join me now. It's time to set fire to who you thought you were. Come to the realization that you're a part of something greater. Your life matters. Every life matters. Every single life matters. And everything on this planet is alive. Let's bring peace to this planet.
right, everybody, I think that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Four Expedition Adventure and my trip to the San Francisco mountains of Northern Arizona. If you haven't become a subscriber to my channel, I'd love it if you would. Of course, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when videos go live. And to support Four Expedition, go to fourexpedition.com and go to the store. We have a lot of really cool products in there you can buy. And if you'd like to become a member of Team 4X, go to fourexpedition.com slash join to learn more. Until the next time, take care.